All right, so Networking Riches Live, two days online, turn you into a networking master. At least that's what they're saying. Um, I got to be honest, I'm a little intrigued by this one, but also like a healthy dose of skepticism. What do you think? Yeah, good place to start, mm -hmm. right? Especially with these online events. I feel like everybody's got the secret sauce these days. Totally. And this guy, Casey Eberhardt, calls himself the ideal networker. Okay, I see you. Casey Bald move right out of the gate. But then he doubles down, guaranteeing leads and sales within 48 hours of the event. Like, come on. Is that even possible? What do you make of that? Yeah, 48 hours. That's a pretty tight turnaround. <laughs> What's interesting to me, though, is that focus on speed, right? Most networking advice, it's all about the long game, building those relationships over time. But Eberhardt's saying, no, you see results almost immediately. So that suggests he's got some very specific tactics up his sleeve, which could be worth exploring. Actionable stuff. Not just vague promises. I like it. But then he hits you with this whole... Networking riches formula N times E times P times C times F equals riches. Um, I don't know about this one. Feels kind of gimmicky. Yeah, the formula itself might be a bit much. Yeah. But I think what he's getting at is the importance of a structured approach to networking, which, I mean, let's be real, most people don't have. Right. They just kind of wing it. Yeah. And that's really effective. So true. So let's break it down. If N is network, which I'm assuming it is, then we've got four other factors here. What do you think E, P, C, F? What could those be? And more importantly, how could understanding this formula translate into something actually valuable for our listeners? I think you're spot on with N for network. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you on each for expertise. Because here's the thing. People often go into networking situations and they forget to actually showcase what they're good at. Mm -hmm. They get so caught up in the whole like trying to connect thing that they forget to actually communicate their value proposition. It's about knowing your strengths, right? And being able to articulate them in a way that resonates with the person you're talking to. Okay, so N for network, E for expertise. What about P now? I'd say P is for people skills. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, networking is about connecting with other human beings. Which honestly can be the most terrifying part for some people. Oh, absolutely. But that's something I notice Eberhardt actually addresses in his materials. He talks about the eight guiding principles of how to not come across as salesy. So he's clearly aware of that fear and trying to help people overcome it. Love that because nobody wants to feel like they're being sold to, right? Yeah. Especially in a networking context. So maybe that's the CC for connecting authentically. You're on a roll. Authenticity is huge E in networking. Huge yeah. E. People can spot a phony from a mile away. So if Everhart can teach people how to be genuine, how to build real relationships, that's incredibly valuable. So that leaves us with the F. What do you think F for follow-up? Nailed it. <laughs> the follow-up factor. Yeah. And you know what? This is huge. I mean, this is where so many people go wrong. They've just dropped the ball completely. Oh, tell me about it. I've got a drawer full of business cards to prove it. You go to an event, you chat people up, you collect a stack of cards, and then what? Exactly. Revenge. Nothing. They just sit there collecting dust. Yeah. But the follow-up, That's where the magic happens. That's how you turn those initial connections into actual relationships. And hopefully those relationships turn into clients and sales, right? Yeah. Which brings us back to that whole 48-hour thing. You really think Eberhardt's follow-up strategies could be that powerful? I mean, it's possible. If he's teaching people how to follow up strategically, how to personalize their outreach, how to provide value right from the start, yeah, that could yeah. definitely speed things up. So it's not just about blasting out a generic nice-to-meet-you email. There's an art to it. 100%. Uh. I'm really curious to see what kind of specific tactics he gets into in this workshop because a solid follow up strategy can make or break you in the networking game. Okay, so we're seeing a pattern here, yep. right? A structured approach, authentic connection, strategic follow up. These are all things that can actually move the needle, regardless of the marketing hype. But there's one more piece of this puzzle we need to talk about this business breakthrough mastermind. What's the deal with that? Have you ever done a mastermind? I have. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. It was a game changer for okay, me. Okay, now you've got my attention. What was so transformative about it? For me, it was the power of being surrounded by other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. people who understood my struggles, my ambitions, and could offer a fresh perspective on things. We brainstormed ideas. We held each other accountable. We celebrated each other's successes. It was amazing. Like having a built-in support system for your business. I love that. But we've also talked about the importance of authenticity. How do you make sure a mastermind group doesn't turn into this kind of like ego-driven competition fest where everyone's just talking at each other instead of really connecting? That's where the facilitator comes in. Right. A good facilitator will create a safe space for vulnerability, encourage open and honest sharing, make sure everyone feels heard. So it's about fostering collaboration not competition. Exactly. When a mastermind group is done right, it can be incredibly powerful. 
You're right. It's not always a perfect recipe. So for our listener who's thinking, okay, this mastermind thing sounds kind of cool, but how do I know if it's right for me? Oh. What are some red flags they should watch out for? That's such a good question. I would say a lack of clarity around the group's purpose and goals mm -hmm. is a big one. You want to make sure everyone's on the same page from the get-go. You don't want to walk into a room full of people who are all expecting different things. Exactly. Another red flag is a facilitator who dominates the conversation or pushes their own agenda. You want someone who empowers the group to share their own experiences and insights. Someone who acts as a guide on the side, not a dictator from the front. Okay, so purpose facilitator. Anything else? One more thing. Pay attention to the energy of the group. Do you feel a sense of connection, of support, or does it feel competitive, draining? Trust your gut on that one. If something feels off, it probably is. Absolutely. Choosing to join a mastermind group is an investment of your time, your energy, your money. Make sure it's the right fit for you. So we've covered a lot of ground here, from Eberhardt's networking riches formula to the ins and outs of mastermind groups. For our listener who's still on the fence about this whole thing, what are the key questions they should be asking themselves? I think it comes down to this. What are you hoping to get out of this whole networking thing? Is it those quick wins, those immediate leads, or are you in it for the long haul? Building relationships strategically over time. Because let's be real, Eberhardt's whole thing seems to be about speed, right? Networking yeah. riches, like you said. That suggests a focus on immediate results. So if you're someone who thrives on that fast-paced, get-rich-quick kind of vibe, Maybe this is for you. But if you're thinking more long term, building a network that's going to serve you for years to come, you might want to ask yourself, does Eberhardt's approach really align with that? It's all about finding the right fit. And that goes for the mastermind thing, too, right? It can be amazing, but it's definitely not for everybody. A hundred percent. The big question to ask yourself is, do I work well in groups? Am I comfortable sharing my experiences, mm. my challenges, getting feedback from people? Because it's a vulnerable space to be in, right? A mastermind group. You're opening yourself up to these people, trusting them to support you. Exactly. And for some people, that's really rewarding. But for others, it can feel a little too intense. So if you're more of a lone wolf, you like to figure things out on your own. A mastermind might not be your jam. But if you love to collaborate, bounce ideas off people, learn from others' experiences, then yeah, the mastermind could be the thing that really makes this whole networking riches live thing click for you. It's about knowing yourself, what you're comfortable with, and choosing the path that feels right for you. This has been really eye-opening. I feel like we've gone beyond the surface with this one. Oh, yeah. Really dug into the potential value of this event, but also some of the things to watch out for. Any final thoughts for our listeners before we wrap things up? At the end of the day, trust your gut. You've listened to us break it all down. You've hopefully had some of your own reflections. Now it's about tuning into that inner voice. What's it telling you? Love that. Because sometimes our gut knows what's up before our brain can even catch up. So if Networking Rich's live feels aligned and your gut's giving you the green light, go for it. And if it doesn't, that's totally fine too. There's more than one way to build a network, to succeed in business. The important thing is to keep learning, keep growing, keep connecting. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> that's all the time we have for this deep dive. Hope you found it helpful. And remember, no matter what, happy networking.